Uh, I think we're good to go, not to waste the time of those who joined on time. So thank you very much once again for joining and welcome once again. Uh, my name is Tatiana Yankilevich and I'm your host for the day. Uh, we are at our first of the two workshops uh, that are part of the Shop Open Science and Research Data Management Train the Trainer Bootcamp. Um, the workshop today is organized by the Shock Project and very kindly hosted by the ISIS pre-conference as a pre-conference workshop. So we're very grateful and uh, happy that that was a good uh, chance for us to uh, collaborate on an interesting uh, subject matter. Uh, the second workshop will take place on the 12th of May, and I hope you're all registered and received the links for that as well. Um, all right, so let me give you a, a few words about what the Shock Project stands for, why we're organizing this and the such. Uh, the Shock Project is a, uh, is a social sciences and humanities open cloud. That's the, the big shock abbreviation that we're always using. And the objectives of the project of this a little bit over three year project is creating the social sciences and humanities part of the European science, open science cloud, uh, maximizing reuse through open science and fair principles, interconnecting existing and new infrastructures, and establish an appropriate governance model for shock EOSC, so the, for the SSH part of the European Open Science Cloud. So that's a pretty ambitious goal, and we've been working on it since January 2018. And as part of this project, we organize, uh, not only do we develop uh, several materials for trainers uh, in SSH, but we also organize bootcamps like this today to advance the skills level and present the tools that we already have developed so that trainers like you can use them in their training as the training material. This is a, a quick slide of what we're trying to achieve, but I've already uh, described that a little bit as the objectives. So social sciences and humanities are seamlessly integrated in the European Open Science Cloud. A very ambitious goal, I would have to say, but that's something we're working on daily. Availability of EU-wide, easy to use SSH open marketplace where tools and data are openly accessible. EU-wide availability of trusted and secure access mechanisms for SSH data conforming to EU legal requirements. Uh, State-of-the-art research infrastructure in several pilot domains advanced through dedicated SSH data pilots cluster projects. EU-wide availability of high-quality, cloud-ready SSH tools and high-quality SSH data, and maximizing reuse through open science and fair principles. Now, these are all big words we're, we're, that we're basically trying to uh, express the following. We as the project are trying to bring SSH into the, the uh, EOSC by introducing different tools that will be stored in the marketplace and providing services that would relate to those tools. Now, if my computer just gets to work, as I said already, I'm the host for the day. My name is Tatiana Yankilevich. And I'm the training coordinator at Libre, and I work on Shock uh, on Shock Project together with other colleagues. We have a bunch of wonderful speakers that I'm going to introduce next that made this event today possible. Now, the first presentation you're going to receive today is the tools for checking numeric data, and our three uh, wonderful uh, speakers that will present that are Christina Machter, Data Collection Development Manager, UK Data Service; Anka Vlad, Research uh, Data Services Officer at UK Data Service, and Dr. Hina Zahid, Senior Research Data Officer at UK Data Service. So thank you very much, your colleagues from UK Data Service for making this uh, workshop um, a reality today. The next uh, presentation you're going to uh, have today is what to learn how to be more, want to learn how to be more fair, try fair aware. And the two presenters for this are Lina Stupinskas, a Policy Officer at Dance, and Joy Davidson, a Coordinator UK uh, Digital Curation Center both of them are representing the Ferris Fair project today. So thanks for the project and you guys for making this happen. And the three other speakers that are going to give you three different presentations are Ricardo Brauchmann, uh, Data Station Manager, Social Science of Dance, and she will be presenting the Dance Data Game. Uh, Didactics and Foster Train the Trainer Materials will be presented by Irina Kuchma, Open Access Program Manager at EIFO. And the homework assignment, a part of this uh, uh, model of training that we developed for today and uh, uh, Wednesday will be presented by Ellen Leonards, uh, the training coordinator at Dance. Now, a quick housekeeping uh, notes, just so that we're all comfortable. I'm sure we're all familiar with the Zoom etiquette by this time, but just to remind those of us who are, you know, experiencing Zoom fatigue and don't really want to uh, remember those uh, things anymore. 
uh, only the lecture parts of these workshops are being recorded. You can see the recording on the uh, uh, showed on your screen. Please be aware that we're only posting the lecture parts for your convenience later on, so you can refer to them in your homework assignment or generally when you want to go back to listen once again or something. You will receive the recording links uh, later. Slides are available on a shared drive that we created for all the participants. Uh, I think my colleague Ricardo is posting the link in the chat as we speak. So please feel free to access that at any point if you find this helpful. If you have questions, please put them in the chat box. We'll address the questions right after the presentation. So that make sure that you put your question in there and we'll make sure that it's addressed. Uh, mute your microphone while somebody else is speaking, um, just so that we eliminate the background noise. And please participate. If you have questions, ask them. We're always happy to hear them. We're always happy to engage with you. Now, the quick program for the day before we move to the more fun uh, activities is I'm doing a quick introduction and welcome. Uh, and then we're going to have the presentation of three tools. Like I said, tools for checking numeric data, the fair aware tool, and then data game. After which we're going to have a short break just to give our brains a little bit of time to recuperate from all the information and digest it. And also, you know, use the bathroom, water, coffee, whatever you want. And come back to very exciting and uh, uh, interactive didactics and foster train the trainer materials uh, session that will be presented by Edina Kuchma. After which, uh, Ellen will introduce the homework assignment that you'll be working on before the next session to you. That's the quick uh, um, program for the day. And now as an introduction to how we would like to advise you to run your events or what works, what doesn't work, it's very difficult to break the ice and create a group spirit online because well, everybody has uh, the you know Zoom fatigue, you join yet another meeting, yet another workshop. So we're trying to walk the talk and incorporate the elements we're gonna be talking about in our meeting today. One of the ways to do this is unfortunately online uh, through Menti. So what I would like you to do is go to menti.com and use the code 4885-8499. I will quickly stop sharing my screen so I can share the Menti with you and we can answer a few questions. Uh, give me a second. Oh, there we go. Uh, do you see my screen? Not if yes, yes, great. All right, so yeah, thanks. So let's uh, you know break the ice a little bit. This is going to be a fun activity. We don't want you to be too formal about it and stuff. So let's think very creatively. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Just the, the first one or two words that come to your mind when you think superpower, awesome, uh, put it there. Menti.com, use the code 4885-8499 and let us know what your superpower would be. And Corona, that's a fantastic superpower. So we could have this in, uh, in real life. Flying, I see that's popular, healing. Luck, healing COVID, perfect. 32 hours a day. Ooh, there's some uh, hardworking people. Uh, Omni signs, night vision, uh, convincing with policy MA. Not sure what that meant, uh, what is meant, but if you want to explain, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Three hands and five, uh, five screens and the 32 hour day. So we can all do several things at the same time, 32 hours a day. Uh, teleportation, cure diseases, energy blasts. Very interesting and creative uh, things you guys are coming up with. Eat even more cheese per, per day, per, per kilogram, I don't know. But uh, cheese, I also can relate. Uh, that's partially the reason why I moved to the Netherlands. Cheese, cheese, cheese. Um, Perfect eyesight, I can relate. I'm not wearing my contacts now because I'm staring at the screen very close, but yes. <laughs> Create or freeze time. Teleportation seems popular. Super mom, yay for super moms. I think all moms are super moms these days. Uh, live it, no need to sleep, breathing underwater. I think these are very interesting choices you guys have. We're gonna have fun reading this a little bit later as well when, you, when we're done with the workshop. Okay, well, 
if you're, if you, I hope you had fun answering this and thinking about what would be your superpower, because I think a lot of those things are actually quite doable, except for, you know, the 32 hour day, I think maybe, maybe difficult. Uh, but let's move to the second question. That's a little bit more relevant to why we're here today. And the question is, what is your favorite part of a workshop or a training? Could be online, offline, doesn't matter. What's the favorite part of it? What's the, the what do you enjoy the most? That's a tough one, huh? <laughs> Feedback, new ideas. That's great. New toys. Ooh, you're going to get a few today. Group work, learning new things, hands-on practice. Uh, gaming, yay. Experimentation, new connections, meeting experts, coffee break. That You'll have that as well. <laughs> a lot of those things you're mentioning, I hope you're going to get today from the training of, or the workshop, whatever you call it, for the boot camp. Uh, networking, clarifications, engagement. Well, I'm happy to see that a lot of those things are hands-on because that's kind of how we wanted to um, devise this workshop so that you guys can have as much time to uh, practice what we're preaching um, as you want and ask questions. So please, things are in your hands. Engaging and uh, you know learning new things and networking, please do so during our workshop today. I see we still have quite a few uh, minutes left, which is great because I wanted to do one more thing. So now that we've broken the ice, I would usually ask you those questions and ask you to discuss them with each other, which is much more fun than me talking about it all the time. So, but I apologize for that. We're trying to adapt to doing things online in a better way, but it uh, doesn't always work the best. But one of the other things I would like to do is, uh, it's not necessarily playing a game, but we have an exercise that I would like to present and share. I'm going to try to do it right now. That is going to take about five minutes. Um, all right, PowerPoint slide. Yes. There we go. I cannot see my mouse, but... Uh, ooh, sorry. Anyway, I cannot see my mouse. Uh, well, uh, bear with me then. We're going to not have a slideshow. We're gonna, not going to have it full screen. But I hope you can still see. Can you still see what's written on the uh, on the page? Okay, great. We can see it, Jam. Great. So then um, if you could grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, whatever it is, you can have a sticky note, whatever you prefer. You don't necessarily have to share afterwards. It's just for yourself. But um, grab a piece of paper and follow the instructions on the screen. I would not say it would take five minutes, maybe take three minutes to, write, to draw whatever it is that you're drawing, following the instructions. We're gonna follow a lot of instructions today. We have a lot of presentations of tools or new toys, toys and somebody put it in the word cloud. So uh, it's important to learn how to follow the instructions early on. So just take three minutes to draw whatever is uh, written here. For those of you who can't see very well, First, draw a square. Then draw another square at 15 degrees angle to the bottom of the first square. Then the third step is draw four lines down from each corner of the second square. Oh, thank you, somebody. Uh, thank you, Laura, for giving the F5 note, but <laughs> I should have known that earlier. Um, okay, draw four lines down from each corner of the second square. Next one up is draw a circle next to the second square. I'm going to read them out so you guys uh, see what you can see. Draw a smaller circle on top of the first circle. Draw upward line from the side of the first circle and draw two triangles on top of the second circle. Now you can just follow the instructions for take your time, we're not rushing, and draw it. I'm also going to do that. The instructions seem vague. That's a really good comment. There is a purpose to that. And I will explain in a minute as soon as everyone's done drawing. Just to the best of your abilities, draw however you see it. Thank you. 
Okay, I hope you're all more or less done with it. Raymond uh, uh, made a comment in the chat and the instructions seem vague. Indeed, they do seem vague to me as well, uh, but this I think is done by the developers of the game for a good reason. Uh, okay, David says, does it rely on common habits, thinking biases? Yeah, in, in a way it does. I wonder if uh, you could un uh, maybe share your, your um, drawings by showing them to us, by uh, showing your camera, opening your camera up. Okay, and then we can see, uh, we can see what, what you turned out to draw. Oh, see, I see actually many of those are very similar to each other. Yep. Yeah. Oh, some people are doing much better than than me, <laughs> because this is the eighth time or something I'm do, trying to do this, and every single time I try, um, it shows me something different. Yeah, really fun. Uh, really fun pictures. Does anybody wanna wanna unmute themselves and talk a little bit about your experience? Was it fun to draw it? What did you expect to draw, and what what came out of it? Just feel free to unmute yourself and start talking if you want. I needed to know what the purpose was. Mm -hmm. That would have given me a better sense about the 